Yes, there's two of them, and last time we put their heads on and these colourful cosmetics, and there's more colourful cosmetics to come, including gripping hands and rotating wrists. I have puppeteering rigs, which I can drive these robots from, but ultimately they're driven by DMX, which is a lighting protocol. And the idea is that these are performance robots which are robust, reliable, and transportable, that I can take to places to do YouTube collaborations and lots of YouTube content, but also physical events. So today I thought I'd talk about how I'm actually planning to do a performance with these robots. What sort of interfaces can we give to the public to interact, as well as the puppeteering rigs, and what else can we do to actually set up the show? I've been using Freestyler, which is free DMX software, to drive the robots up to now, but I found something much better called QLC+, and that's going to be the heart of my show and integrate everything together, including interfaces for vision recognition and also how hard that you're gripping. QLC Plus is designed to control DMX lights, like this RGB lighting bar, which you can just get on eBay. And if you want to know how I made the robots talk to DMX, then look at one of my previous episodes. There are Arduino shields and libraries for that. So as far as the software is concerned, the robots are just DMX devices with channels, with faders that we can move, and we can automate like we're automating the chase on this light right now. So in QLC, we've got this concept of scenes, which are basically fixed light positions. And we've got three faders here, which are for the RGB of that light. And of course we can go through those and we can see all the fader positions are different and we can recall them just by clicking on them. We've also got chasers which are combinations of scenes. So if I play this chaser you should be able to see it alternating between two green levels. Or if I do the purple red one it alternates between purple and red. And we can define all the fade in and fade out times, how long it lasts. And we can put multiple things in here of course. Um, including other functions, so we could put sounds and other things in that play in order with the chaser. On the virtual console, we can assign everything so we can control it. So we've got these buttons we can click on that now play the chasers. We can see them playing through in the queue lists. And in the red box here, they're exclusive, so they'll only play one at a time. And we'll come onto it later, but we can assign external controllers to these buttons, which is very useful. If we go and have a look on the sample desk, and let's just play through this chaser here. We can see the fader automation here, which we could also link to external faders to have physical faders automated and physical control. What we can also do is build a show with an audio timeline and the chasers put onto the timeline. And that allows us to recall any functions we like and have the whole show play back. We could also take manual control by going back to the virtual console and triggering something while that's running. But if we look at the sample desk, we can still see that automation. So that seems to be working pretty well, and that'll suit our purposes for animating the robot. And because, as I said, the robots are just DMX lights, we can use that to make up animations for the robot, like this Larson scanner effect. So now we've got various scenes, which were like the lights before, but they actually are robot head positions that move the head to different positions, and you can see those faders are in different positions. And we've also got various ones here, which for different lighting effects on different channels. And again, we've got chasers here. So if I move to head diagonal and play that chaser, we should be to see that head moving between two diagonal positions and the other one is two others. And of course, these fade in and fade out times do the interpolation between all the positions on the way, which would be fades, which give me that nice smooth motion. As before, we've got our virtual console. I haven't put any queue lists on, but we can, of course, click on the buttons and assign those to external interfaces, which we'll be looking at next. And we've got these other set of exclusive controls for various lighting effects. And I've put together a little show. It's not terribly impressive, but that's just basically an animation for the head with some music and some various effects. There's also a handy sound to light widget in QLC, which means I can patch the sound intensity of anything playing on my computer through to a DMX channel like the robot's mouths. It could be any other channel, any movement channel or anything else, and it also allows me to split out 16 frequency bands so I can make a giant LED visualizer or a mechanical visualizer or something like that. 
Now, before we animate up the rest of the robot and put a show together, I'm going to show you about other interfaces we can bring into QLC. And that means that we can have interaction while the show is going on. Either we can manually DJ the robot, so we could DJ all those motions in loops using buttons or another interface. And also we could allow the public to interact in a limited way to control perhaps the lighting for the show or even some of the motions on the robot. The first interface I can add in is an app called TouchOSC, which costs $3.99 and allows you to build custom interfaces on any iPad or Android tablet. And that can link in directly to lots of music applications and also QLC+. Although QLC Plus does support OSC directly, I've installed OSC Bridge, which allows it to turn up as a MIDI interface on my Mac or my PC, and I've just selected that as an input. And now I can attach buttons on Touch OSC to buttons on my virtual console. And now various aspects of the show could be controlled from this interface. And that means we could give it to the public and they could operate limited amounts of the show. So I've attached this fader here to the mouth lights, and you should be able to see that fader operating on the virtual console of QLC as well. And I've also got various buttons here which turn on and off various features. So some of them are just static positions, which make the head move. And some of these are the chases that give us motions. Or we could just get external input on the RGB values for all of the lighting on the stage. So the public could decide on the RGB mix for anything in the show as the show's playing. But do we really want to give the public my tablet? What if they take it away and browse dodgy websites? Perhaps we should give them something else, like this Innovation Launchpad, which is a box of lovely light-up buttons which kids can mash. We can also fix this down really easily. So I've set up my launch pad. You can maybe see these are different colors. I've got red on the top row and these three are yellow. These are the lighting effects for the eyes that do various things and they turn white when you press them. These are some head motions. And again, we've got those chases. So we can just press those and off it goes doing its thing. Let's go and do an another one there. That's the other diagonal motion. I think we've got just looking in the air and we could have each row of these could be a different function so the next row could be of course the eye lights then we could have arm movements the other arm movements waist movements we could have the lighting in the show various different lighting chases set up we could have one of these for each robot and each set of lights and then people could compete doing dancing competitions pressing the different buttons and basically seeing who's the best at dancing they don't have to use a puppeteering rig they don't have to do anything and they can't break it and they can't steal it because it's got a kensington lock on but what if I don't want the public to touch anything at all? Well, QLC Plus can send and receive OSC messages, which is a protocol called Open Sound Control. So we can send any data to it over the network from any other interface. So now I'm going to introduce you to a piece of software called My Robot Lab, which is another open source piece of software. It's a Java app. And My Robot Lab is what they use basically for the in-move robots quite often, which is the big 3D printed humanoid. Now, uh, My Robot Lab is quite good because it supports all of these interfaces to various bits of hardware. And most of this is contained within My Robot Lab, so you don't need to interface to the hardware directly. But you can just code up in Python to make your own code to basically connect inputs and outputs and script things up. And here is My Robot Lab running on Windows as a Java app, so it'll run on a Raspberry Pi or a Mac or anything else really. So it's very easy to uh, get things running. I'm just going to do some facial recognition. So let's open a OpenCV instance, which we can just name. And we should be able to open one up here. And we should be able to just go and capture some video, hopefully. Yep, there we are. And we can add various filters. So I'm just going to add in face detect. And straight away, we should find that it detects my face which seems to be working pretty well. And we'll also find that it supports OSC, so we can go and get an OSC instance here as well. And we just get a little tab here. Now, in order to make this work, we need to write some Python script that fits in the Python window. There's quite a lot of examples in the forums, and I've managed to put together some Python scripts that opens an OpenCV instance and an OSC instance, connects OSC to the computer we're looking at now, but it could be any IP address on the network starts um, a callback routine here, which basically is whenever there's OpenCV data, it will do something. And I've basically got some bounding box dimensions and various things here to send OSC messages. So if we actually kick off this Python script, we should find it automatically opens these. So we can see already some coordinates down the bottom here. We go to OpenCV, we can see my face getting tracked. So we've got the coordinates of the bounding box. In fact, we can undock this so we can see both at once. Let's just do that. And you should be able to see as I move my head left to right, the first column moves and up and down is the second column. 
and the other two are the bounding box. Now I'm sending OSC messages and I'm sending them to this computer. Now on QLC Plus I'm receiving those messages, so I've got the uh, uh, OSC input patched and I've linked my faders to those messages. So now you should be able to see as I move my head left and right, we can see the left hand fader moving. And if I go up and down in my chair, the other one moves. And now we could use this bounding box as well and work out how close my face is as it gets bigger and have a third fader or any other interface. But for now, that seems to work pretty well. Now we'll find if we just stop this in these faders, they're patched to OSC. There's an auto detection routine, which will auto detect the message. And each of those is um, a unique channel. And in my Python script, I've in fact just got unique titles here, so that seems to give it a unique channel number. I haven't decided or experimented with what happens if you actually put a number in here, but essentially that's the subject for the message and that's the message. So that all seems to work quite well. And of course we could use that to control various aspects of the show. So I've put a little webcam on the front of the robot here, probably should have integrated that into the head design, but never mind. You should be able to see the face tracking preview though. So as I move around now, I've of course patched those faders to the two DMX channels for the head. So if I move around, that seems to work pretty well. And it should detect anything that looks like a face, and it detects the nearest face. So uh, there we go. And what I've done is set it so that it leaves the last variable there if the face disappears. So if I move this out of shot, oh well, I'm in shot, but if I move myself out of shot and leave that one over there, then it should leave the head there until another face comes in shot somewhere else, and then it will look at that person. If there's a closer face, then it will look at that one instead. So that seems to be working pretty well, obviously up and down and left and right tracking, and it should track the nearest person standing to the robot. But of course we could control other things other than the robot motions. We could control any lighting, any DMX lighting or any DMX device or any device really. So we could have all of the lights swivel around to point at the person who's standing closest. Or as they bob up and down it could control the lighting level on the whole stage. Or we could patch it into a synth to control musical pitch. The other thing I've had sat in a box for a while since I played around with virtual reality is the leap motion which is this little sensor I've got on the table. And that's actually a hand tracking sensor so you can see my hand there is fairly well tracked and all the bones are solved. And my robot lab, of course, also supports this, so we can pull out all that joint data. So I've just got a sample script here that's measuring joint uh, a grip strength there, in fact, so how, the, how much the joints are closed. So you can see that number going up. It's quite granular, actually, all the way to 100 as I close my fist. So we should be able to use that map to OSC to control something else. So for now, I've just patched it into the intensity of this light, and you can see the fader moving on the virtual console. But of course that's very easy to operate and anybody can do that without touching anything. And of course we could build any interface to anything really, either a MIDI instrument like my barcode scanning guitar. Or anything we can connect to an Arduino with a MIDI output or an OSC output. And there are libraries for OSC for Arduino. All you need is an Ethernet shield. And we can make any connected device in the show that interfaces to QLC Plus and control some aspects of the show. Perhaps floor pressure pads or big knobs with encoders on that kids can come and alter the RGB values of all of the lighting. So for now, I need to do some more stuff. I need to build some more things. I need to put hands on the robots, which I think are gonna have light up hand backs and some other exciting stuff we can control. So for now, here's a scripted robot show.
So that was totally scripted as a show, but I can actually make shorter shows or longer shows and assign those as functions in QLC and assign that whole show to a button on a physical interface. So there's no reason I couldn't DJ longer sequences of multiple motions as individual functions and DJ those live or trigger them from external interfaces on loops. So all of these robots are open source. I've put all the code on GitHub and all of the CAD. So you can build them if you want to and they're GPL3 licensed so you can commercialize them and modify them as long as you republish the source. So there's a lot more coming up for this. Don't forget to subscribe for more updates and check out my Patreon and YouTube channel membership if you'd like to support the channel. All right, that's all for now.